And believe me, it's all worth it. Octane Render is one of the best render engines available for any software. And luckily, it's available in Blender. And today, we're going to render this fresh modeled gold and diamonds shell that we've modeled last week. This is a 3D jewelry professional rendering tutorial for Blender Octane 4.4 2025. Let's get started. So obviously go to your 3D scene and turn the Octane Render Engine on. We are going to use the Photon Tracing Kernel because we are going to render Angel Ray's Caustics. Now let's turn the Viewport Shading Preview on and everything is black as it should. There's absolutely no light element in the scene. So let's go to the world properties and on the environment background, we're going to use a texture environment and we're going to go to shading. And let's go at once to the world shader type and we're going to add an octane texture image, RGB image. Let's plug texture out to texture and we're going to load the brown photo studio 02 from Polyhaven. I'm using the 4K AXR file format. There, we have some proper lighting in the scene. Now, I know we're in Octane, but it's not a reason to forget to save and be happy. Now, select all the elements that are going to be yellow gold. Let's go to Object, uh, Shader Type, New Material, Gold, Object, Link, Materials. Now let's set the roughness to zero for a starter, metallic to one, metallic edge tint to black for the albedo. Set your favorite yellow gold color. Now we're going to tweak the environment a bit. Let's go back to world settings. If you look at the reflections, you can see there is an unwelcome flat appearance of the environment. That's because we have no projection set to our image. Let's add an octane projection. The typical one is spherical projection, but the matcap projection works very well. You can set it to the projection type here. And we're also going to add a UV transform node plus. This will allow us to rotate our environment, change the scale of the environment, and also move our image. Then also we're going to set a visible environment. Let's make a copy of the texture environment, plug it to visible. Let's make it a backplate and set our favorite color for the background. This is more comfortable for the eyes while preparing the scene. Let's go back to the gold material to make some important improvements. First, we're going to add a texture, procedural texture, marble texture on the bump node down here. And that's looking already good with the default settings. Maybe you will need something on the projection node and maybe also you'll need the UV transform to adapt the marble texture. Also, obviously, maybe you'll have to tweak the settings to adapt it to the scale of your jewel. And now we need to have a look at the way that the gold is reflecting on itself because these yellow parts all over the place here, these reflections, these are not good at all. So obviously we're going to do something about this. So here we can see the metallic reflection mode the default is set to artistic, which is generally practical, but we're going to go to IOR plus color. Now here, the first channel, that's the red channel, is going to start working. Okay, so if I put it way up, we are back to the same result. Let's go maybe at 1.5, and then we can also fine tweak the second number to further adapt the reflections. Maybe let's go at 0.5. So this is what we need to tweak and work with in order to get a much better contrast. And this makes our gold material a lot better. And if you want, you can use the round edges on the gold. Plus, I am going to use the maximum samples and the radius of 0.15. Obviously, you need to test the radius depending the size of your jewel. Now select all your diamonds and we're going to work on the diamond material. First, let's create the transmission transparency, transmission plus, and add the grayscale color node. Let's set it to one. Then it's important to set the albedo to black. And then also we need to 
remove the roughness and we need to set the proper index of refraction of the diamond and very exactly that's 2.4175 obviously you can find other numbers like 2.445 something around that that's from scientific publications instead of 3d forums because yes, 3D forums tend to have slightly inaccurate numbers. Um, okay, metallic nothing, obviously. The rest is all to black and nothing. But we need a dispersion coefficient. So now in the newer version of Octane, you have a choice between the Abe number and the Cauchy formula. So luckily, the Abe number is a number that you can also find in scientific publications. And for the diamond, that's around 55.3. And we're going to see that, yes, that's visually very correct. We have those slight dispersion colors. And especially if you go to the top view, we're going to see that, oh, yes, this looks like it should. So now let's have a look at the diamonds set with the jewel because obviously you need to check that this is working properly for the stones in place now obviously remember to cut out the position of the gems forget about setting the gems inside the metal that's obviously the case for all the gems here at the center the gem is only grabbed by the prongs so please i don't want to see any of you setting your gems inside the metal that's an abomination study jewelry make 3d jewels use ai ai won't help you if you don't know anything about jewelry gems never go inside the metal their positions are cut with cutters like in real life so it's up to you if you want to make professional 3d jewelry renders Great. So now clearly here we have too much light in the scene. The diamonds are too bright for my taste. They lack contrast, but that's more a background and environment issue, a lighting issue. But before we solve that, we need to work on the surroundings for the jewel. And today is not a modeling tutorial. So I'm going to create a fabric and a gold chain to set the diamond in something more interesting that empty space before we directly correct the settings for the lights and how much light the diamonds get so go set up the scene that you want and then we'll work on the light and the caustics to complete this 3d jewelry professional rendering tutorial okay so an advice when you create the environment is to set the camera first here i'm using a square resolution for a 4k render and the lens is set for a wide angle so the focal length is pretty long and the sensor size is pretty wide this allows me to capture many sides of the design thanks to the wide angle so i'm treating this jewel like a landscape and that's perfectly fine because that's exactly what i want i want to see a lot of the sides of the design because this jewel has very nice details all around if i were using a small sensor size I would almost get an orthographic view. Obviously, that will work for some jewels and some designs, but in this occasion, I really want a wide angle. Once your camera point of view is set, develop the rest of the scene. I've added a chain. The chain is an array with a curve modifier. This chain on a path. The chain is very important because it brings dynamic to the scene. It's very hard in jewelry photography. So in jewelry render, it's even harder to create interesting jewelry scenes. So here the chain is the perfect dynamic element to draw attention to the entire design. Then I've created a floor, like a cloth, like a fabric. It has texture and ridges, so the floor is high resolution. And I'm using a displace modifier, obviously, to avoid a flat floor. And that's all very pretty, but my fabric has no texture. So luckily, it renders perfect white. And I know, even if for many of you in the industry, the perfect jewelry render on a white background, we need to admit that this is a poor render. 
And it's not that I always want more and that we have to complicate things for nothing. We don't want the jewel to be floating in the air like it just don't care. So let's go back to shading. And the first thing that we need for caustics is a dark floor. It's totally vain to try to achieve caustics on a white floor. So here's the result. I'm going to show the images I'm using. So for the displacement of the fabric, I use this kind of image. This is a type of silk. We can see that the fabric is not flat at all. That's very important. Also a nicer realism. And I'm also using this texture here as an RGB image with a color correction node. The gamma is super high and the gain is very low. So the fabric is not too bright. And then also I'm using a burlap image with a UV transform node to adapt the scale and the rotation. Also a color correction node. And I'm mixing these two images at 50% on the albedo. I'm using a slight metallic just to have some very, very slight reflections here and there on the fabric. Something very important, the specular is set to zero. If you set it to one, you're getting a lot of light on the fabric. So this goes to zero. Then the roughness is pretty high. So the light properly disperses over the fabric instead of having highlights. Then I'm using a turbulence texture mixed to the burlap image and the bump is pretty strong at one. So I get a dark gray fabric. Now, where do you find these nodes? So go to Octane Texture Image. That's where you find the RGB image. We already know that. And then go to Operators. That's where you find the Color Correction node and also the Mix Texture node. Very practical nodes. It's time to set up the lights and the proper settings to create the Angel Rays Caustics. Some preliminary checks. So right at the beginning, I turned on the photon tracing kernel. It's the best one for the caustics. Samples, let's go a bit higher than 500, 2048. And the rest of the settings are generally good for almost any situation. You would tweak them in very specific convergence situations. And this is not the case at all today. And on the materials that you want to generate caustics, Turn on the allow caustics. That's super important. Otherwise, no caustic happening. So on the gold and on the diamonds, turn on allow caustics. Now, let's go to world. And what we are going to do is set the power of the environment to zero. And everything goes black. That's exactly what we need to start a perfect caustic generating workflow. Now we're going to go to add light octane area light. So obviously at first we have no idea about where to place the light. Let's put it up there somewhere and let's go to the object. So here we have the texture emission. That's the area light. Let's crank up the power 50,000 distribution to 50. This might very well be exaggerated. That's how it starts. Texture to white size really small 0.1. And then it's all about finding a proper position and orientation for our light. And now let's just wait for the calculation of, of some samples. And what we are seeing here now are the caustics only. So we know exactly what this area light is creating as caustics in this setup. And that's why it's very important to set the environment light to zero as black. Otherwise, you will always have the interference from the environment and will not properly recognize what the area light is generating as caustics. This is how we get very nice looking caustics very quickly. My only concern here is the position, orientation, size and power of the light. And here I'm just working with one light. We'll have to see if we'll use more area light with very specific power and positions to generate very specific caustics in the areas that nothing is showing up. And something very obvious, the white areas, is because the light has a huge power. So that's where the light hits the floor and the result is absolute white. It's very easy to deal with these or using nodes in compositing or editing the images by hand 
to remove these white areas. By example, you can render this image with only the caustics and then render the scene with the environment light and composite them as needed. So this is the render with the caustics and no environment. Save this. This setup is using three area lights, one at the top just for the bail, one over the jewel and one at the bottom, also over the jewel, but projecting caustics at the bottom of the image. Now I can remove the lights from the render, go to world. I'm going to set up the power to 0 0.15, three, because remember earlier we had too much light, especially for the diamonds. Now we're going to set up the depth of field. So select your camera, camera settings, depth of field, remove your autofocus. Focus object, I'm going to use a central diamond. Now the aperture, set it much higher in order to get more depth of field blurring. Now you can turn off the allow caustics on the gold and the diamonds to speed up the render. They're totally useless. We already rendered the caustics. You can also switch to the path tracing kernel, renders a lot faster. And don't forget to set up lights to create nice shadows for your jewel and bring it to life. Round area lights. So here I have a warmer light at the bottom right. And at the top left, I have a slightly blue light. And let's make the render of this image. Also, as a bonus information for watching this tutorial so far, if you want a nicer contrast, set the specular to zero or almost zero. The result will be a lot sharper. Then also add a color correction node on the world image. Time to render this image. And it will be time to go to your favorite image editing software. Start correcting the image with the caustics by removing the elements that you don't like. Then set the caustics on top of the render using an add or screen transparency. The result should be such that the image without the caustics will look really sad and abandoned. The caustics really do bring the render to the next level. Then add a vignette effect and a couple of glares to complete your artwork. Many of these effects can be done in Blender and Octane Blender and also the compositing but most of the time I prefer to do that in another software. Thanks for watching. Support my work and my channel by becoming members and buying my assets on Superhive Blender Market. Also funding the Blender Foundation. Have a nice day, take care and see you soon.